So this is actually a quick and informal one, but I wanted to show you uh, one thing that I just like tried out and I found it actually pretty neat. So last week we announced the integration where we built an LLM extension for Copilot. So we directly integrate into Copilot by providing all the metadata that the Next already has. So in case you missed that, we have an entire blog post about it. So I won't go into the details, but like just feel free to either check out the video, which I'm also going to link in the description, or just go through this blog post of what the whole feature is about and how we want to, how we are planning to basically evolve this. So, and so what I did here is like when you have an X console installed in VS Code, you can use that at an X uh, to actually ask questions and change your workspace basically. So here I have this AI shop npm workspace based setup. This is a small monorepo which uses our, our latest configuration with npm workspaces and types of project references. But when I generated this one uh, initially, it, I didn't configure linting at all because I just wanted to have it like at the minimum possible setup, no fluff, just TypeScript uh, and then X and that's it. Uh, and so basically I just like asked, uh, I'd like to configure the module boundary rules because like I already added tags in here. And so tags is a way in an X to kind of add markers to your projects, which you can then leverage in different ways, right? Whether that's for defining code owners, but also for specifying these module boundaries to make sure that there's no unwanted dependencies between projects. And so I didn't configure that initially. I just added this in here for my code owner setup. And so I wanted to configure it now for another demo I'm going to give in a webinar that's coming up. And so here, basically, I just like ask it straight away, like, hey, how do I configure the module boundary rules uh, in this workspace? What plugins do I need to add, etc.? Uh, and so I, I gave it some hints. Uh, I, I would actually be curious to try out like what happens if I wouldn't have set an X linting package at all. Would it have been able to figure it out? Uh, but in any case, like it did actually pretty good because like what it tells me here is well, you need to first of all install that ESLint plugin package, add it to your to your setup, and then you need to use that enforced module boundary rules. Notice. I didn't mention that in particular. So it figured it out on its own. And the cool part here is like, uh, after we launched initial extension, we also now integrated it with our documentation. So if you go to the docs, uh, in case you have not used it yet, there is this AI chat, we've, which we've been having for actually quite a while. And for doing this whole chat thing here, we create a whole lot of embeddings out of our documentation. So it's already ready and can be processed here in this chat assistant. And now we also expose it to the Copilot extension. So basically it has now the knowledge of our documentation, which hopefully is up to date and uh, correct and gives you all the info, but also about all this local workspace setup and configuration that the next itself collects in terms of metadata. So just to give you an example here, there is this project graph JSON, which if you look into this, has a lot of metadata about the different projects in here, uh, different dependencies, the commands that are run, uh, but also metadata in terms of more technology and like a whole lot more. So this Copilot extension now has all that info. And so therefore it correctly says like, hey, you should install this plugin, just run this command. Here it could be optimized, actually it could say just like run NX add, which would also run the initial configuration setup. But then it goes ahead and says like, there's this enforced module bound rule, you need to configure it here, I define it like this. And it gives me an example. And I think the cool part here is it actually sets up module boundaries as an initial configuration setup that actually makes sense because if you look at it, it uses my text that I have in this workspace already. So as I mentioned, if I go in here, I go into my packages, orders, let's say feature create order. This uh, is of type scope order. So it is within that scope and it has type feature on it. And if you look here in the actual Copilot setup, let me actually make this a bit bigger. You can see how it correctly proposes that you should probably have such a setup where the app can link directly to feature and UI and maybe util. We could argue that might not be the case, but like overall makes sense. But then you also have like that type feature can depend on type a data access, type UI, type util, and then data access can just depend on util, etc. UI can only depend on util. And so that actually makes a lot of sense because you want to have the feature libraries, which are more kind of overall overarching kind of walkthrough use case libraries depend on the lower level, uh, more fine-grained libraries, which is for data accessing or for just like having UI components. And so this is really neat because like it combines the knowledge from the workspace with the doc. So I found this is actually pretty nice. There's still some ways to where we can optimize that and we definitely will. And uh, we're also working on a cursor integration uh, where we expose all this data in the same fashion for like as an MCP. And uh, so, yeah, just wanted to share that with you all. Um, 
If you haven't checked out our blog post, definitely go check it out. Uh, as always, like and subscribe to get future updates as we roll out curse integration and more exciting AI features. Stay tuned. See you in the next one.